please welcome Garrett from Curve to the main stage. Thank you so much, Melissa. I've been very exciting to have this entire conference going on. I don't think you're going to find bigger Python maximalists than the team with Curve. It's one of the things that got me very interested in Curve when I was first kind of learning about cryptocurrency and DeFi and everything. Um, just a phenomenal lineup. It's always going to be a tough act to follow Patrick Collins, who is perhaps the greatest educator in the space, um, but wanted to spend a few minutes talking about some of the things that he referenced in his presentation, uh, but didn't have time to get to. So uh, in particular, I'm interested in highlighting a few of the concepts of where Python fits into the broader uh, cryptocurrency and specifically DeFi space uh, with the focus on some of the tooling that was mentioned. So Patrick got to talk a little bit about Brownie, Apeworks, and Titanoboa. And he was kind enough to share his presentation with me. So I was interested in filling in some of the gaps around some of this specifically. So we know that it's been a horrible year for cryptocurrency if you're looking at it just in terms of economics. Um, like all the amount of like lows we keep hitting in terms of morale, when everyone looks at the space and says, it's looking pretty ugly, how could things possibly get worse? And then it manages to keep getting worse. Uh, the good news is if you kind of tune out all this kind of like trading fluff, it's been a phenomenal year for the technology. Uh, Miko talked a lot about this in the opening presentation, which if you haven't watched, you should definitely go back and watch that. And one of the things that really proved itself amazing throughout this past uh, year is as we've watched centralized exchanges um, that some of which were just essentially con artists trying to kind of push this stuff failing left and right and users very sadly losing a lot of funds. One of the amazing things is that DeFi has been phenomenal over this past year um, throughout all these different kind of market crashes, turbulence, um, you know, all these horrible events happening. We've seen DeFi has functioned spectacularly. So this has really legitimized the technology, in my opinion, that we're building with this decentralized uh, financial system. And this is only the start of kind of the innovation that can take place with cryptocurrencies. As Miko is pointing out, we're starting to also see innovations in how people organize. And we're starting to see innovations in how people um, you know, take Web2 services and add them and move them on chain. So it's a very particularly exciting time. and. I mentioned that uh, you're not going to find bigger Python maximalists than the team at Curve. Um, traditionally, even though Python is about the most popular programming language in the world, if you actually look at all the different kind of cryptocurrency repositories that are getting built out, they're often utilizing Solidity, of course, which is uh, more Java-like in its nature. And even just beyond that, a lot of the tooling hadn't even really existed in Python. So we had this sort of like horrible situation where there's all this interesting development happening and none of it was taking place with the largest developer community on the planet in Python. Uh, this is also as Python is going through incredibly exciting times. So you know, uh, just a few weeks ago, we saw that Python 3.11 is getting released, which is one of the biggest knocks against Python had always been this kind of um, this kind of like slowness of Python relative to some of the other faster languages. But with everything else working so good with Python, we're already seeing Python getting at this point about, uh, it's about it's supposed to be about like a 60% speed improvement with 3.11. So very exciting times and very exciting to see what's going to continue developing with this. And then just on top of this, there's no better tool for data science. The amount of uh, tools that have been built on top of Python that which you can import and work with, uh, you know, get NumPy, get uh, your Pandas data frame open and open up a Jupyter Notebook and spend all day munging data and then plot it using the kind of beautiful matplotlib or uh, py uh, uh, Python charting libraries. The data science community, once it gets unlocked and moving into cryptocurrency, we're going to start to see all the amazing advances in deep learning in artificial intelligence in uh, advanced number crunching start to apply themselves to on-chain data. And there's no doubt that the amount of data that's being generated by blockchains is not only highly trustworthy because you can't fake it, uh, which is one of the reasons why DeFi has done so much better than traditional finance. Um, just there's all this amazing data that's going to get fed into all these models and start feeding it back on chain. We're going to start to see this hyper intelligent programs controlling the future of the uh, future of the web and Web3. So it's an incredibly exciting time. Uh, Patrick hit on this during his presentation a bit, but I want to reiterate, uh, when we're talking about Viper, one of the things that has caused it to become so incredibly successful with the way it's developed is it's really kept 
core to its values. And there are three big values that underlie Viper, which I wanted to reiterate because this is kind of so important for how it's developed and how it's able to distinguish itself and has evolved in this different direction from Solidity. Like Patrick Collins, I'm also not here to uh, attack Solidity at all. I, in fact, teach a class at the University of Washington on Solidity. So I want Solidity to be successful or I'll be out of the job. But that being said, um, Viper has kind of emerged out of this kind of need to create in addition to more Pythonic tools for cryptocurrency programming, it's also really important that uh, Viper kind of improve upon some of the issues with Solidity. So in trying to get Viper off the ground, uh, one there are three core principles. The first of which is security, which is, uh, as Patrick said, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. It should be not just possible, but fully natural to be able to build secure smart contracts in Viper. Uh, this really contrasts with a lot of the uh, kind of early days, particularly of Solidity, or we saw a ton of hacks happening because there was just kind of like faults in the code. And wherever possible, Viper has built out its language in such a way to guarantee that the code that's being written is secure, as well as adding security checks on top of it, uh, making it easier, like Viper natively integrated safe math where it took Solidity a long time to get that imported. So if you were just a beginner starting off, you're probably less likely to write insecure code if you're using Viper. Um, simplicity is another big one because the best DeFi projects, of course, are the ones that publish their code on chain. And then you can pop over to Etherscan and read through the contracts. And Viper wants to make it so easy for the reader to write, uh, to be able to read the code, that it actually, in some cases, makes it tougher for the writer to write the code, uh, which could be a bit of a hassle. But then it means that once the code is published, it's much easier for anybody, even beginners. Um, one of the principles of Viper is that it should be. Uh, beginners should be capable of reading through a Viper contract and understand what's going on under the, under the hood. So to this end, if you're trying to learn about Viper, there's almost no better source than to just read some of the smart contracts that have been published and see if you can understand what's going on at every step of the way within Viper. It helps that Viper is based on Python. Uh, Python with its indentation has this very natural flow that makes it kind of easy to look at and understand exactly how things fit together. And as well, of course, um, these debates have been going on uh, since before Viper and Solidity came along, but the kind of readability of Python in my mind is a huge advantage for the language. And then of course, with greater readability comes greater auditability. Um, it's really disappointing that people keep falling prey to hacks because we do have it, uh, we do have the capability of publishing code and anyone can read it. Um, even though Viper tries to make it easy for people to read code, my estimate, like just based on kind of informal polling, is that about maybe 20% of people actually even look at the smart contract code before they uh, interact with it, which means 80% of people are just trusting what other people say. So if there's such a small number of people, if it, you know, it's, I'm guessing 20%, it's probably way lower than that. It's maybe closer, like as low as one or 2%. Um, but we want to make sure that the people who do take the time to write the contracts and uh, sorry, sorry, uh, take the time to go on Etherscan and read the contracts, we want to make it easier for them to audit it. So this is where Viper, for example, doesn't allow imports. You don't want to have to have the auditor jumping back and forth between 27 different files to understand what's going on. Viper gets rid of modifiers because that also requires you to jump back and forth in the code. Um, throughout the entire process, the Viper design has been informed to make it difficult to write misleading code. So these are the three core values of Viper, security, readability, and auditability that have informed how it's, uh, how it's taken shape. But through this process, it's also developed some amazing things. Um, so Patrick was talking a bit about gas savings, and I want to re-emphasize this point in that um, Patrick was looking at a very simple token, but as your contract gets more and more complex, the gas savings for deployment can become substantial. The gas savings in terms of like basic contract interactions tend to be kind of like a few percentage better. Um, but for more complicated contracts here, there is this one uh, tweet which you can look up uh, running this gas comparison, and the deployment for the Viper token was between 30 to 60% cheaper. Um, now, why is that important? We're the developers. We have to pay for the costs or our bosses have to pay for the costs. So if we're trying to save money using deployment, um, it's very important that you want to be able to look at uh, the deployment and save yourself some money. And then on top of that, Viper, um, because there's been a lot of kind of advanced DeFi applications, Curve, Yearn Finance, that uh, need more advanced math functions. There's a lot of native math functions being built under the hood. And if you need more advanced math functions, there's some great libraries that offer the capability of like more advanced math functions. So give Viper a shot. Um, tooling. 
as I mentioned, uh, we uh, Viper when it uh, when it came along, it was uh, the the initial development was done by a few different engineers. Um, one of the most prominent people within this space is Ben Hauser, who works for Curve. He also works for uh, and has produ produced a lot of code for Viper and mm -hmm. also Brownie. So if you like Python with cryptocurrency, you have Ben Hauser to thank for pretty much everything because Brownie was his brainchild. He wanted a more advanced tooling and he wanted it written using uh, Python. So he created this kind of full robust development and testing framework suite. Um, it includes a lot of advanced features from PyTest. So if you've ever used PyTest, uh, it's very easy to get going right off the ground with that. Um, and one of the other cool things that he built out was coverage uh, GUI which means that as you're looking through the contract, you can see how much of your tests have covered which parts of the contract. So if you're aiming to build very robust tests, Python, uh, Python-based Brownie is a great way to do so. Um, Brownie is not actively maintained. There's still been a few updates, but as far as more features, look towards Ape. Ape uh, framework has not only forked Brownie, um, but they're building some really interesting new features on top of it. So we expect that Ape, Apeworks is going to become the way to go uh, as far as smart contract testing. And on top of it, they have some phenomenal educational materials. So look at the Ape Academy for some tutorials for how you can launch your own ERC-20, ERC-721. It uses Viper, it uses Ape. It's a great place to look. But where I wanted to get a few seconds to talk about is Titanoboa. Titanoboa is essentially an extension for Viper that allows you to natively execute Viper code within a Python command line. So this means, for example, that you can write raw Viper code and test it and play with it in a Jupyter Notebook, for example. So this is uh, very easy to install and it's the next sort of like step up in evolution for how we're going to be able to bring the amazing programming talent of all of you into uh, getting, with, uh, getting into smart contract development and smart uh, analyzing data right on the blockchain. So by way of example, within a few lines of code here within a Jupyter Notebook, uh, we're able to analyze the effects uh, with this tweet here of different urine strategies in USDC and chart the results directly. Uh, so some of the cool features of Titanoboa that I wanted to talk about briefly, um, if you have ever need to enumerate these storage variables within a contract, uh, you can do this using Titanoboa, just like so. If you want to work off of live blockchain data, you can now connect to a mainnet fork on your local host. And you can, in a very fast way, because it's actually caching RPC results with level AB, you can actually run hard simulations against the mainnet state. Uh, gas profiling. If you want to see a line-by-line -line audit of the gas usage of every line of code in your contracts, you can find out which line is causing the uh, worst gas overflows or like the trying to do some advanced gas golfing. Gas profiling can be done natively with Titanoboa. Opcode patching. So if you want to patch arbitrary opcodes, um, uh, for example, right in the VM, you can use this, for example, for fine-grained tests. So here's an example using Titanoboa's S-Store, which traces all the touched storage slots by address. Uh, User-defined cheats, if you're familiar with Foundry, uh, this is a big selling point for Foundry. And now you can do this and send the result directly to standard out. So anything you can do with Python, like tracing, HTTP requests, you can do directly. Um, you can evaluate arbitrary code. One of the issues when you're having to write, uh, for example, code is you'd have to oftentimes write a smart contract, deploy it, and then test the code on it. No more. Now you can actually directly write uh, code using Titanoboa and evaluate it. And finally, um, revert reasons. So... Filtering revert reasons with Boa reverts. Uh, it's a general mechanism that allow you to revert, uh, filter on physical revert strings, Brownie, NetSpec, Doxygen style, dev reason strings, even compiler generated checks. So if you've ever gotten a transaction reverted due to compiler inserted checks, no idea why, uh, we end that here, error maps and revert reasons for compiler checks. So don't sleep on Viper, Titanoboa, Brownie, amazing stuff coming. Um, if you wanna follow me, you can uh, follow my daily newsletter, you can find me on Twitter, you can find me on Lens, and you can also join the Viper Discord using this link here. If there's any questions, I will take that uh, quickly here or in the face-to-face. -face. 